Got a nice setup down here. What do you mean, no credit? I will gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. Ooh, Algernon. Okay, this place is pretty spooky looking. I'm pretty sure these are skulls. Well, those are definitely skulls. Some sort of big book. Like Randy Orton's arms. <laughs> this, this guy's kind of spooky looking himself. Algernon. Let's see who he is. Algernon. Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind watering the far horizons of astral space while his body peddles his otherworldly wares. So he's an elf. Yep. Interesting. Good evening, young human, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon Half-Dream. To ease your way through the Sixth World, I offer you the best in magical foci, spells, and fetishes for the conjuring of spirits. Let me see what you have. Now, none of this is really relevant to us, because we're playing a Decker Street Samurai guy. But, here, like, po Power Bolt, it's like a, it's sort of like a generic attack for ma attack spell for mages. It doesn't have, like, a refresh time or anything like the others. It's kind of, basically, if, if you're a mage, this is your equivalent of a gun, essentially. Then there are actually, these are the ma mage spells. Are those a, you not know. abilities? What's that? Are those not abilities? Because that first one's just aim. Oh, no, it says aim. Increases the target's hit to hit chance by 12% last two rounds. So a lot of them are sort of like like buffs, essentially. Dispel Maggot. Dispel it. Dispel any target's ongoing magical effect. Heal wound. Mana ball, which is like an area of effect explosion. Mind wipe. Target ignores all enemies. Stun bolt. Acid stream. It does damage when it hits, and then it does ongoing damage for, you know, for like subsequent rounds for a while. Boost armor. Distraction. Decreases sort of the opposite of, of aim to hit enemies with. Lightning bolt. Damages the man, makes him lose one AP. Flamethrower. Mana bolt. Mana bolt um, ignores their physical armor and like d attacks. They have to defend, but with their willpower instead. It's like if you've got like a big dumb, like a big dumb bruiser guy, he'll be vulnerable to mana bolt. Weak in armor. Then conjury. Th these are shaman abilities based on charisma rather than will. There aren't really that many good ones, or at least I wasn't able to get much use out of them, except for haste. Haste is awesome. Otherwise, I didn't get that much use out of Conjuring last game, even though I was a magic heavy person. Then Chi Casting, like I said, these are like physical adept abilities. And then, these are consumable things that summon, as it says, summons elementals to help do, help do battle by your side. Requires the spirit summoning skill to use. And as you can see, a lot of these have like particular prerequisites, like Fog required Conjuring 3. Silence required Conjuring 2. Uh, aim requires Spellcasting 2. I assume Chi Casting. Yeah, Chi Casting have... Oh, well, Magic Resistance 3... Ma magic Resistance 3 costs 10 Chi ca Requires 10 Chi Casting. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Let's see if this guy has anything else to... Anything we can talk about him. I knew you would be back. The stars foretold it. Actually, it was more like the laws of supply and demand. What magical needs can I satisfy? Okay, he's got nothing else to say right now. Later on, he'll have some quite interesting things to tell us. I, I like the fact that he's wearing, like, a wizard robe, but he also I, he looks like he's wearing, like, a tie as well. <laughs> it actually looks like a trench coat. Like, some sort of big, long... It, it looks like it's, like, halfway between a trench coat and some sort of magical cloak. Yeah. Which I guess is appropriate. Let's see. Eric Mersman. We remember him from upstairs. He's the guy who sells us clothes. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, not that you look bad now or anything, but each each one will help you to keep help to keep you on the right side of the ground. Take a look. All right, show me what you have. Uh, same stuff as before. Nothing new. Uh, that top one isn't, is it? No, that's that's the same as before as well. The one with the dumb like respirator thing. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I, I love this guy, T.B. Gruberman. Which sounds like some sort of product mascot more than an actual person, doesn't it? Sounds like an investor. <laughs> T.B. Gruberman and Associates. All right. 
Is it's... he holding a gun to his head? No, he's saluting. With a with, with a metal hand. <laughs> Alright. Thank you, male orcish Grace Jones. Nice to meet you. Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say. And the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvi obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful. And he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and, of course, price. Bunker Buster Gruberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. How can I help you? What happened we... to that other lady? Oh, oh, the one before? I don't know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the one who sold the gun to Coyote? I don't know if we yeah. run into her again or not. This guy has a bigger array of stuff, though. What exactly do you sell here? Things that go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends. On occasion? On occasion. Consider me your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet strict UCAS military spec or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance, repairs, and upgrades, if you so desire. And if that wasn't enough, I also teach a safety and instructional course every weekend. This, week's we're, this week we're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. <laughs> so what can I get you? Let's take a look at what you've got. Now he sells weapons, you know, drones, which, you know, is Doberman, Smoker, all right. consumables like, you know, hand grenades. There's different types of grenades. There's frag grenades that just do damage. There's uh, concussion grenades, which do, which take, which uh, reduce AP. Instead of hip they're like, like flashbangs, like, Sort of. Right. That, I mean, effectively. Smoke grenades, which, like, you know, screens you from enemy fire. It's got basic med kits. Drone repair kit. Um, no later stinger on, grenades. What, what's that? No stinger grenades. Well, later, no, but later on, you, there are incendiary grenades later. Cool. I believe they're white phosphorus, I believe. So if you want to rain a, you know, a fire, you know, drop a rain of willy peat on your enemies, you can't think that. All right, weapons. Seska Black Scorpion, you know, Fischetti Security. Uh, Rain White Phosphorus down on a group of people converging on a phone booth. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I can, I, can up, I can go up from my current AK-97 to the Semipal VZ slash 88V. Basic assault rifle that's surprisingly good. Doesn't seem to have any benefits other than slightly higher capacity, although maybe there's some that's just not really some elements that aren't just li aren't listed here. But I'm not going to spend that much money. Ba machete, baseball bat, baseball bat's only ten million, so you're not okay. Now, right now, like, right now we'll just meet him. A number of these guys will have, like, some backstory that you'll learn about on subsequent visits. David Fry II. And look who else is here. Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this techno-bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists, and if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer, any, anything gear you need. The uh, what's a deck? <laughs> this is kind of like, this is kind of like wandering into a gun store and asking what a gun is, but let's ask what's a deck. You jack into the Matrix, or in the context of a run, when you jack into the local node of the facility you're in, the deck determines how many programs and ESPs you can carry and the firepower of your base Matrix attack. Dex have IP when a Dex IP is reduced to zero. You'll get booted from the system, and it'll hurt. What's a program? <laughs> this is just... <laughs> a program in the Matrix allows you to defend your avatar against countermeasures and enemy, attacker, enemy deckers. There are a wide variety of different programs for attack and defense at different power levels. As you progress as a decker, you can use more powerful versions of these programs. Yeah, the Matrix is sort of like the, like their, you know, like the global computer network. It's like... To use it like right. using it like at like its most powerful level, it involves like full immersion, like VR. 
that you could that you can control like by direct direct neural connection. Remember the data jack? Yeah. That's what that's for. You you can you can plug your brain directly into a machine computers basically. And there actually are like really high like security uh, like high uh, sophisticated um security programs that can actually physically harm you if you're if you're connected via data jack. Nick, you appear to have muted yourself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. What's an ESP? Johnny, you want to take this one? Remember the janitor? Johnny? Yeah. Here he is. Sure, when you when you infiltrate a... You didn't really think he was a janitor, I hope. Sure. Uh, he's got an earpiece. When you, when you infiltrate a facility on a run, you have a team. When you jack into the Matrix, you are all alone. That's where ESPs come in. An ESP is a highly advanced artificial life program, which when you deploy deploy it, manifests as another team member in the Matrix. Different types of ESPs have different abilities. What do you have for sale? Renreku Kraftwerk 1. Acquired decking 3. Renreku's best deck and easily modified for the streets. Sony CTY 360. The first deck made for Shadowrunners. Simple, street-ready, and nearly indestructible. Then various programs. Killjoy does minus one, one AP to target. Suppression reduces alarm state. Blaster, which is like area effect. Degrade. Erosion. Firewall. Killer, level one. Medic. Shield. Slow. Sniffer. Execute Assassin ESP. All right. No, nothing really apart from that. See you later. Oh, I'm being rude. Let me introduce you to our, our resident Decker and my good friend, Johnny Clean. All well, the same overalls that you saw him in upstairs, down here, leaning over a, cup, a workbench crammed with circuit boards, cables, and chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if I can be. How is Decking used? The decking skill is often used on terminals in the real world to get information, hack doors, etc. But occasionally a run will have the option or the requirement to go into the local matrix, local area network of the facility you are infiltrating, in order to gain access to valuable information or control more important things in the real world. Why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No. Janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of systems so cleanly that no one knew I was there. Half the Matrix runs that earned me my rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of part of me. Is it true you were part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he is sure as hell not going to tell you anything about those days. For your health and his, best to let the subject drop. Okay, now you're probably wondering why the hell why they reacted so badly to that. Well, objective yeah. com optional objective completed. Meet all the black vendors in the safe house. Okay. There was an event called the the uh, the crash of 2029. When uh, it basically, it sort of led to the development of the Matrix as we know it in the 2050s. There was a, there was an incredibly destructive uh, computer virus loosed, uh, loosed on the net that caused, like, Massive damage to the global infrastructure, economic chaos, governments literally rising and falling, and no, and to this day, no one knows like you know who created it or set it loose. But it was extremely destructive. Echo Mirage were a group, and and by this, by the Echo Mirage was a group of uh, basically elite deckers that the then United States government assembled to deal with the issue. Okay, right, which they eventually did successfully after like i said after you know tremendous amounts of you know damage had been done and then afterwards i, I believe the uh, u.s government was then realized okay wait we've got we've assembled this team of the most insanely skilled and potentially dangerous deckers in the world so they tried so they tried to have them rubbed out basically so echo so then you know echo mirage they all kind of you know went to ground and vanished and you know no one really knows what's happened to them since but, you know, needless to say, if, if someone was part of Echo Mirage, they're not going to say it. Right. 
Be careful out there. Okay. Okay, that's everybody in here. Though our work down here isn't yet done. Hmm, now there's a clicky, clickable thing, thingamajig here now. Let's see what it is. Remember, they said Sam would bunk here sometimes. The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the streets, sheets, blankets, and pillows, you find an old photograph that has seen a lot of wear. Look at the image on the photo. The picture is of a blonde boy and girl, both about age 14, sitting on a dock on the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arms tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Oops. Check the back of the photo. Written in a woman's hand are the words. Sam and Jessica. Lake Sammamish State Park. Summer, 2040. Okay, let's see. They're about 14, I think. Yeah, Sam, man, Sam wasn't that... <coughs> Sam, Sam's pretty, Sam was pretty young then. This is like 2054, so he wasn't even 30. Pocket the photo. 